Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be reviewing Zorin OS 16. That's right, it's been officially released to the public now and you can download it at Zorin.com. They've made many improvements here and I'm excited to check things out today. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Zorin OS, it's an Ubuntu based distribution that gears towards users making a transition into the Linux space over from Windows with a very similar layout to Windows. What I have in front of me right now, as soon as you get done installing Zorin OS, you're welcomed by this wonderful greeter and tour. So we're gonna start the tour right now because it is one of the best things available here in Zorin and other operating systems should take note of this because it can really help a new user out something we take for granted, in my opinion. So it tells us a little bit about how to launch apps, choose a different appearance if we want real quick, so you can launch the new Zorin appearance app, which allows you to select between different variations of the Zorin look and feel with this desktop environment. I'll hit next again. If you have this installed on a virtual machine, something really important is to install those guest editions or extra software that the virtual machine offers for a smoother experience using any Linux distribution and the virtual machine. We'll hit next again. Connect your online accounts if you have any. Link your phone with Zorin Connect, an app special to Zorin. This page shows us where we can launch the software or app store from. We'll hit next. Here's something great. If you want only Office instead of LibreOffice, which is the default office suite here. It's as simple as this one click here to install it as well. We'll hit next one more time to get the end screen here that helps us view the help page if necessary, but we're going to close out right now. I'm being reminded that there are a few updates right now, but I'll remind myself later to install those. And before we keep going on with the review, please make sure to smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. I do want to talk about the Zorin Appearance app. So we're going to go down to the start bar, hit the Zorin Startup screen, and then go to Zorin appearance. In here we have appearances where we can simply change the appearance by just clicking on one of these icons that are available to us and we can see the different variations of appearance that we can have here. This one reminds me of the GNOME desktop experience. Click over here now you have a dock. On the right hand side we have workspaces very much like you would get in standard GNOME. This one here we have an array at the bottom. Again this is in fact GNOME just a different layout here for us where we have some icons in the middle. On the right hand side some options and then on the left hand side a show applications and workspaces button available to us and we have two more options but we'll go with the standard one here that Zorin comes by default with and you can of course even get more desktop layouts if that's something you're interested in by upgrading to Zorin OS Pro I believe it's about $40 we'll keep moving on to the themes one thing I'll mention and you might have noticed already we have a, a night shift theme right now in the background since it's 12 a.m. according to the system. We see that the background has darkened up and this changes throughout the day as the day gets lighter and darker, so does your background now. When it comes to accent colors, you can select your own. If you don't like the typical, which was blue, we can select different ones and we'll see how that affects our theming on the left. One that I like using is this slate gray looking one, but blue is pretty good. We'll keep the default just to look at how things seem like by default. Interface allows you to change up a few more things. Title bar buttons can show up on the left or the right of the screen. Notice how they move up here in the top when selecting that. Enabling or disabling animations. For those of you who don't have a very powerful computer, you can disable the animations. That way they're not taking up extra resources whenever they play. You don't necessarily need it. If you want something that's gonna take up a bunch of resources, go ahead and enable the jelly mode which is uh, really fun to use but as you can see here with this current emulated environment doesn't run too well but gives you a very jello like flow of windows i'm going to turn that back off a few other options here such as what the left super key does for you you can select different things such as the zorin menu or the activities overview we'll go to desktop you can select if things show up on the desktop and whether you can put icons on the back I do like this enabled and I like that the fact that it's enabled by default here in Zorin 16. You can change up your icon sizes and then go to fonts and of course change that up as well. The reason I show you Zorin appearance is it's one of those things that's been added in and updated that really makes your overall experience much better by simply giving you access to some very important theming options. That way you can make the desktop environment your own. We're gonna exit out of here and continue on the tour of the desktop environment. The bar at the bottom looks pretty much the same as Zorin 15, 
although it has received a bit of an update. If you want a more in-depth review, I do have one. I'll post a link in the description below for you, which actually gives some side-by-side -side differences between the two versions, 15 and 16. But anyways, on the far left-hand corner, we still have our, our startup button. And here we have subcategories such as accessories, games, graphics, internet, office, sound and video, system tools, and utilities. On the right-hand side, we have the current user that's logged in, as well as a few places for ease of access that belong to the home user. We also have a few more quick access items, software, settings, and Zorin appearance, which are all nice to have at your fingertips. At the bottom right, we can of course shut down, restart, lock the computer, or log out. And if you need to search for anything such as the appearance app, simply type it in the bottom and you will get your results. And going through the start menu here, we have our first subcategory accessories, which includes clocks, files, maps, text editor, to do, and weather. In games, we have Mahjong, Isle Riot, Solitaire, Mines, Quadra Pascal, and Sudoku. Graphics contains GIMP, an image viewer, LibreOffice Draw, and Photos. Internet, you have Firefox as the default web browser. Office contains the LibreOffice Suite, Calendar, and Contacts. Sound and Video, Brazaro, Cheese, PDV, Rhythmbox, Sound Recorder, and Videos. The Sound Recorder app is actually something new that they've made changes to, so check that out if you haven't. System Tools includes various different ways of administering the system, such as adding additional drivers if you need proprietary ones, checking out the tour, connecting up your phones with Zorin Connect, and changing themes with Zorin Appearance. Utilities gives you an archive manager, calculator, characters, document scanner, and much more, such as a screenshot tool and access to the terminal from here. If we launch files, we can see we have rounded edges and much of this has been redesigned. The icon set looks fine to me. I believe it's Iowata, we'll check that out in a moment. But everything looks super sleek in Zorin OS 16. And I'm super excited to keep running this on my own. But for the time being, let's check out some things down here at the bottom. We have our workspaces. If you have any workspaces, you can launch it from the button below and then access those workspaces from the right hand side. Type to search in the middle and then you can launch Firefox as well from the bottom. Files and the software center. Now what's new in the software center? Let's go shopping. So one thing that's been added is now if you click on a specific application on the right hand top you can select between various different options of the same application from different sources. So Flat Hub, I believe, has just been added as one of the extra repos where you can get packages from as well. So for the Zorin software, we have Canonical supported free and open source hardware available, community maintained free and open source, the universe, proprietary drivers and devices, restricted repo software restricted by copyright or legal issues in the multiverse. Continuing on, other software, which you can turn on and off. There's plenty here. You can tell that Zorin OS has some of their own available here and selected. So it adds on to the Ubuntu main source repos since this is an Ubuntu based distribution. And now we have the Flat Hub, Snap Store, Ubuntu and Zorin OS app repositories all available from the store as well as the terminal. You also get the ability to install .deb packages, app images, and even some Windows applications with the Windows app support powered by Wine, which is something that you can enable here in Zorin OS, Windows application support. Let's check out one application such as Telegram, which should be available from different sources, and it is here. Flat Hub, as well as the Zorin OS apt repository. So you can select from different sources. If you don't like the Flat Hub version, you can install different versions depending on the availability of the program or application in the store. And finally, on the right hand side here in the status bar, we have an eject button if you have any CDs, DVDs, USBs. If you need connection information, volume control, or power options, you can select these icons and then get tailored information. And to the farthest right point, we have of the current date and time, as well as a calendar and any notifications that you might have coming from your operating system. Back to Zorin appearance, let's change to this layout here, which in the middle now we have some icons. To the left side, we can see applications and our workspaces. This looks more like Windows 11 or the soon to be Windows 11 release, but it'll be interesting to see what Zorin OS does because they do have a layout available for Windows 11 that's very much like the desktop environment over there, but it only comes in the Zorin OS 16 Pro Edition. For those of you who like fractional scaling, it is now available 
and you can turn it on and off from displays and settings. The latest NVIDIA proprietary drivers are available through this installed image. There are new built-in gesture support options if you're using a laptop just to make things easier for you. This is currently based on Ubuntu 20.04 and of course plenty of applications and apps have gotten updated. Let's really quick check out a terminal and with the terminal launched we'll check out NeoFetch real quick to get some system information. This is Zorin OS 16 running kernel 5.11. It's been up for about 27 minutes. It has around 1900 source packages with 12 flat pack packages. This is running bash 5.0. The current desktop environment is GNOME and the current theme and icon set is Zorin Blue Light. We run the GNOME terminal and this is currently being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series CPU and there's about a gig out of 8 gigs of RAM being used. And after a fresh reboot, let's check out HTOP. We can see we've only been on for about 40 seconds. We're going between 0 and 3% on the CPU. There's about 800 megabytes out of 8 gigs being used. No swap being used. 113 tasks running with 246 threads. So it's fairly minimal, especially for a GNOME desktop. And it looks like we've even settled down to around 760 megabytes. And if I trick the time real quick, we'll see an adjustment to the background. We can see things much better right now because it is light outside, thinking it's 10, 23 a.m. Things are looking much better. I really enjoy that dynamic background. Since Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support, you know you have a stable distribution at your fingertips. I'm looking forward to testing this one out even more in depth as this is the official release of Zorin OS 16. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.